All right, we're going to do a couple more quick exercises with function composition. Um, this one here involving typical functions that you might encounter uh, in a calculus class. And one over here where we're going to work uh, sort of symbolically with some specified values to make sure that we're comfortable with this definition. Um, some people kind of struggle with these, especially once we get in, once you're into calculus and you're looking at things like chain rule and you're trying to get everything in the right places. Um, some people will get really mixed up with this type of question. Uh, but if you remember the definition and you sort of just carefully follow your nose, um, you, can, you can get through them. Um, now for something like this, again, we can consider, well, there's a number of compositions that you could consider here, right? Um, I could consider f of g of x, certainly. Okay. So that would mean doing... 2 g of x minus 1 over g of x plus 3. Of course, you can, you can skip this intermediate step if, if you want. Um, sometimes it helps. And now we plug in g of x. So 2 times 1 over x squared minus 1. Subtract 1 on the bottom. 1 over x squared minus 1, there's my g of x, plus 3. Well, that's a pretty complicated looking expression. Maybe we want to simplify a little bit. Uh, one of the things that we could do here to simplify this is we could multiply top and bottom by that denominator. Uh, there's a catch. We'll come to the catch in a minute, but let's do it first. So we, we want to kind of simplify, so we multiply through by that x squared minus 1. Leaves me with, up top, 2 minus, be careful about bracketing here, x squared minus 1. And then on the bottom, we're going to have 1 plus 3 times x squared minus 1. And if you want, you can simplify that. 3 minus x squared on the top, and we're going to have um, 3x squared um, minus 3 plus 1 minus 2 on the bottom. <coughs> okay, so you can plug it in, you can simplify. Uh, now, you do have to be a little bit careful here because we have to think about allowed values. Um, so first of all, we took g of x, we plugged it into f of x. So g of x had to be defined in order for us to, uh, to do this operation. Uh, so even though this function here appears to be defined when x is equal to 1 or minus 1, um, we actually can't have those values because g of x was not defined at 1 or at minus 1. Um, looking at this, we can see that we also can't have uh, plus or minus square root 2 over 3, because that's going to make the denominator that we have here uh, equal to 0. Um, the other one that we maybe want to watch out for, and it's possible we've already captured it with those, those other two values, is f of x is not defined when x is equal to minus 3. So then we might say, okay, um, what do we get if, if g of x is equal to minus 3. Well, that would mean that 1, if we cross multiply, would be equal to minus 3 times x squared minus 1. So 1 is equal to minus 3x squared plus 3. So if we move the 3x squared over, 3x squared equals 2, we see that, ah, indeed, those are these two values which are not permitted here, right? Uh, so those ones, it turns out, we're taking care of. Um, but if we, if we were not being careful, we would have missed the fact that it's undefined at plus or minus 1 because that's lost once you simplify, okay? Uh, another one you can do, I'll, I'll skip the simplification here to save time. But you can, you can compose a function with itself if you're so inclined. So f of f of x would be 
Well, we replace every instance of x with f of x. So 2 times 2x minus 1, x plus 3, minus 1, over 2x minus 1, x plus 3, minus 1, right? Uh, with the condition that x can't equal minus 3, because probably what you're going to do, you want to simplify, you're probably going to multiply top and bottom by x plus 3, at which point you're going to lose that restriction. And then you look to see what other restrictions you're going to have, right? We also want to avoid um, the situation when f of x equals minus 3, because we, again, can't plug minus 3 into the function. Um, that restriction you should find once you simplify um, in the denominator there. Okay, so I'll leave that with an exercise. Let's come over here. f of f of g of 0, how do you do that? Well, you have to follow the, the definition. And if you, if you unpack the definition in steps, you'll find, well, this means, it means f of f of g of 0, okay, like so. And so that means, well, you work from the inside out. So this is f of f of, what's g of 0? 1. And then we say, okay, and what's, what's f of 1? f of 1 is 2. And f of 2 is 4. Okay? So that's the type of calculation that you're doing here. Um, for this last one, same thing, but in four steps. So it's going to be, we could also, if you want, we could think about doing f of g of f, and then we're evaluating that at f of minus 1. There's a few ways you can do this. Um, so that's going to be f of g of f at, so what's f of minus 1? Ha uh, ha ha. There is no f of minus 1. Probably should have done 3 here, right? Uh, we don't know. We weren't given that value. f of 3 I could have done. f of 3 would be minus 1, but then where, where would we go from there? I think I had something in mind for this one. Oh well, hopefully you, uh, you get the point on that one. Um, so, yeah, so these are some of the things you can try. Um, yeah, I don't remember what I was trying to do with that one. Uh, with more information, maybe you could have done this one, right? But again, it's the same principle. Evaluate the innermost one, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one, until you've got it, uh, until you've got it sorted out, okay? Um, all right, uh, we'll leave it at that.